Hello guys and welcome back to another one at the Nabil show and today we have with us a special guest uh, Rami Rami is originally from Palestine especially in Gaza and he'll be uh, sharing with us his life and experience growing up in Gaza living there and under the occupation and uh, eventually moving out and coming to Canada his life story his family's history there his friends and his experience and how has the October 7th events uh, affected him and his life his family life back home in Gaza so uh, Rami welcome uh, and welcome to the Nabil show and we're happy to have you with us Jazakallah khairan brother Nabil I'm very glad and happy to be with you here this is a very great initiative congratulations on that and inshallah I'm here to help people understand what's the situation of Palestine what's the history what's the background and why these things happening all over the time So um brother Rami uh, what's your last name again I forget Rami Shaat Rami Shaat mashallah okay very good um so um let's talk about history of Palestine you know especially Gaza and your family your parents grandparents you know where did they live where did they grow up uh you know back in the day and until now like where is everyone from very great question thank you alhamdulillah rabbil alamin my family is rooted background is in gaza we are rooted originally gaza city in gaza city so my grand grandparents they were all from gaza so we are not one of the families who were for example affected were affected by the occupation in 1948 and 1967 and they were displaced and moved out of their cities original cities and came to gaza no we are originated from gaza city we are our even our houses and our businesses are located in the center of gaza city hayar ramal everybody knows it so palestine palestine has a very long history i would love to start with uh, where the contradicting points between the two points for sure of a view are differing so in our mindset as palestinians we are the, uh, the land owners of this land and it is a holy land yeah why it's important for us because this land is the prophet's land it's called actually in our culture it's the prophet's land ayyub alayhi salam has passed from there ibrahim alayhi salam has passed from there from there yusuf alayhi salam passed there yaqub alayhi salam dawud alayhi salam so it is called the prophet of uh, the land of a prophet plus gaza gaza it is called gaza to hashim Mm-hmm. Gaza to Hashim. Hashim is the grandparent of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. Yeah. And the grave of uh, Hashim alayhi salam is still existing in Gaza itself in the city. And we have a masjid called after the, his name called Masjid uh, Al- Al-Hashim. So this is a just an overview of what's behind Palestine. Palestine why is it important for the other side they believe it is a holy land it is a promised land yeah so who promised that they i we i don't know yeah. i don't have yeah. the answer for that <laughs> so they say god promised uh, the land of israel to the bani israel and you know back in the day time of musa alayhi salam and they say from that time you know this should have been ours and they were kick yeah. out <laughs> yeah I, i loved your house so i came now visiting your house here i loved it oh it's a, it, it could be mine can i can i steal it from you please mm-hmm. yeah i love it because i don't have a house yet so uh, if you were suffering from <clears throat> from other people all over the world in europe or where you have faced your holocaust don't come to my country and steal it and drop it and kick me out from it and call me terrorist every time i t- i come to fight for my rights and for my land you as as uh, as a palestinian we have been under the oppression under the occupation for 76 years mm-hmm. we are not we are not living our daily life on regular basis as every other humans on this planet on every aspect of our daily life we are facing challenges we are facing oppression we are facing if, like racism discrimination humiliation whatever you call it whatever bad has been in dictionaries 
we are facing them. Even with our daily food, our daily routine work, how to generate income, how to make income, everything is under control. Do you know Gaza is, has been under siege for since 2006? And that will lead us to the next point where the election and voting. But I'll keep it till that. For sure, for sure, yeah. Your question comes. No, thank you for the uh, you know for the background. So, how was it like growing up in Gaza under the occupation when you were a little child after you were born? You know, with your parents and stuff like that. That time, uh, you know, how was it? How did it feel that time? Mashallah, this is a very great question. Look, luckily, I'm one of the luckiest Palestinian who had the chance to study abroad and live abroad and live different, travel in different, uh, to different countries. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, whatever I have witnessed in the world is nothing for me compared to living in Gaza or living in Palestine and the way we were raised. I feel we are blessed. I always tell my friends that the ingredients of creating a human that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in every human on this planet it looks like it's different for the people in Palestine or in Gaza. We have a different ingredients. I don't know why, why we are like that. Mm-hmm. Allah has, has it chosen us to be that way. Maybe. Oh, you're definitely a very <laughs> Maybe. strong people, very determined. and. This is the surviving. point I'm trying to lead to. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, in Gaza, we are breastfed that we are under occupation. Since, we, since our childhood, yeah, yeah. since we are babies, okay? And we have a stolen land from us. We will not be a real man in the future if we don't get our land back. This is our belief. This is in our mindset. This is what Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, is trying to brainwash people mm-hmm. globally. He's trying to interfere into our cultural and educational system that he wants to change our mindset, our Quran mandates, our Hadith mandates from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this guy, I think he's a stupid and idiot. Plus he's a smart on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a smart. He knows how to play. He understands the mentality of Palestinians. He's one of the rare people who understands the mentality of Palestinians. And we vice versa, understand the mentality of the Israelis. We do do know totally how to deal with these Israelis. I know people sometimes they get tender and emotional when they see the the screens and the news and all this happening in Gaza or in Palestine in general. Yeah, but trust me that we are used to that. Mm -hmm. And we do that with love because in our belief we believe that what is being done to us is a blessing from Allah that will lead us to Jannah. Why? Because we are protecting the Prophet of <laughs> the Prophet's lands and we are trying to liberate Al Masjid Al Aqsa from these guys. Yeah. So my dad in this war has been lost for the last four or five months. Okay. I I can't remember I I cried one or twice. Only one or twice I cried for yeah. for his loss, but I I deal with it that this is a mean for me. It might be a cause, inshallah, for me to go to Jannah. Sahih. Yeah. 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 Correct. My dad has nothing. By the way, my dad is a businessman. He his his eighty or ninety percent of his businesses has been done with the Israelis. Oh, yeah. Okay. We we had the borders. So he uh, exports from Gaza into uh, Israel from or? Israel to, to Gaza. Okay, importing, yeah, importing yeah. products. Okay. And I was I was his right-handed guy. Very good. Yeah. So I used to go to Israel land in 1980s. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 1980s. By that time, the brother Nabil, I remember the crossing point of Ares. Now, where the 7 October uh, action happened. Okay. Yes. That a checkpoint used to be a tent. Oh, wow. Yeah, back to Erez. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So the, you, were, you used to cross from the border where uh, the October 7th yeah. attack actually happened. Yeah, we used to have our uh, garment shops. And my dad, in order to be allowed to go and pick him up his goods from Israel, he, knew, he need to get 
special permissions like visas, we call it in nowadays. Yeah. In vocabulary, it's like a visa. But in Arabic, it is called tasrih and magmat, and they are different categories of them. You had to take one by one, one by one. And each one has eligibility criteria. If you don't meet one of the conditions, you're not allowed to get this visa as a businessman. Mm-hmm. So at that time, one of so the... These are, uh, these are visas granted by... Granted by Palestinians, imposed to, uh, by Israelis. Okay. For any Palestinians want to cross the border. And this was, Israel was still under establishment, under growing. Yeah, That's yeah. why when I mentioned the area, the crossing, okay, they were intense. There will be only two people, guys, sitting like that, with the guns on the sky like that, and they look in the car, okay, go, 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 go. Just like that. That checkpoint today is called Erev, where the 7th October uh, actions has happened. Yeah. And it is one of the most restricted military bases. So imagine how the cancer grows in a body. Similarly, is the philosophy of the state of Israel. Mm-hmm. Israel is, I call it personally, the cancer for the Middle East. Middle East cancer is Israel. Why? Because it was implanted by English, Europeans, and on top of them, the Americans' protection. Okay? For the Jews who were suffered and they get out of the Holocaust, now they have no home, they have no homeland in all over the world, so they started to claim that we need to, to make uh, a state for this nation, yeah. the Jew people, yeah. especially after the Holocaust. But that means, if it is uh, after the Holocaust, it means after the First World War, right? However, the plans were set up in 1905 and that's why here I I would love to in, invite every one of the audiences uh, to read the book of the protocols of the elders of the sons of Jew, uh, Zions yes I've yeah? heard of that book yeah. yeah every Muslim should read this this so, but I think the Zionist Federation or the Zionist you know the idea had been around for a very long time, but especially in the late uh, 19th century, so in the late 1800s, uh, there was uh, Theodor Herzl. I think. Right. He was uh, he cre- then started to really push for that idea in order to form a home for the Jews, in preferably in Palestine, uh, but also they were looking at other ideas. But yes. I think their hi- number one preference was in Palestine, and then they came and they offered to the Ottoman uh, Sultan that they wanted to buy uh, Palestine from the Ottoman Sultan, but he denied them. Yes. And then, you know, some more decades passed, World War One happened, and World War Two, where, you know, uh, the, the Holocaust, Germany, and then eventually, you know, their case became stronger, and their people were like, okay, the Jews need to have a homeland uh, where they're not persecuted, and that was their kind of argument. Mm-hmm. And then they started, you know, buying land in Israel, in, in today what is Israel in, in Palestinian territories and the Ottomans were also defeated mm-hmm. so you know is there any recollection from that time like from your maybe grandparents great grandparents any stories that are told at that time how you know things were at that time in Palestine before or around the time when Israel was first uh, established mm-hmm. uh, such a great comment and a great uh, question brother Nabi. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We have to be very careful with the vocabulary we use. Mm-hmm. Some of the, our daily vocabularies we use is made on purpose for us as Muslims to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you were asking your question, you said some of the Jews, they bought some of the lands. They didn't buy lands. Okay. No, what, from what is claimed? For me? Yeah. For you as a Muslim from a different part of the world, yeah. okay, they bought land. For me as a Palestinian who knows the actual facts on ground, yeah. okay, yeah. my land was occupied by force, by power, and I was ripped, and I was oppressed, and I was kicked out of my land. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. 
And that's why our generations and the next generations of Palestinians will keep saying we need our land back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I sold it, I would have got it. That's why in the people who immigrated from parts of the Palestinian, occupied Palestinian lands and came to Gaza or to the West Bank or abroad, <coughs> they have the keys and the title deeds of their lands. They're yeah. dead. I've heard of this, yep. Yeah. And if you go to the grand, grand, grandparents until day with today's generations, I don't know if with this war is still remaining or not, they will find the keys, the historical keys of their house doors with the title deeds of how many donums, how many hectares, how many acres they were owning. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is a propaganda being marketed and advertised on purpose to justify their existence. Yeah, okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, there is no salt land. Mm -hmm. And there I have read some studies published by the Islamic University in Gaza. Okay? And they gave a very comprehensive, detailed study about how much percentage of the Palestinian land was sold, yeah. was occupied, and by whom was sold. A big portion of those sellers, they were Lebanese originated. Why? Because at that time, when you mentioned the Ottoman Empire, Ottoman Empire was controlling and dominating the whole region. Yeah. Yeah. So that Bilad al-Sham was all included as Bilad al-Sham. There was no Syria, there was no Lebanon, there was no Jordan, there was no Palestine. That's right. We yeah. were all called Bilad al-Sham, al-Sham yeah. states. That's right, yeah. <clears throat> so... Uh, what was the uh, question exactly? So the land that was sold by the Lebanese, uh, yeah. you know, mostly. Yeah, so in those studies, there are some uh, professional studies done by, by the way, my, my profession background is city and regional planning. Okay. Very so part of my studies was cities in history. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Palestinian cities are one of the oldest cities in the world. And they have a long history very detailed history. If anybody is specialist or expert in this profession, they would give you each and every city's history with detailed information. What was the total area? How much was it, was taken out of it? How much was sold? How much? So all these details can be found nowadays with the internet. Everything is easy, alhamdulillah. So for, for us, there is no land thought. Mm -hmm. Our land has been stolen and uh, occupied. We want our land back as a Palestinians. That's why you see the Palestinians when they go into the media or the news, the whole world is talking on a side and the Palestinians in particular talking about a different point of view. For sure. Why? Yeah. Because they are the first hand witness they are the ones who have faced and suffered the, the real facts on ground. Yeah? And they know exactly what happened. Today, let's today take today's example. Gaza, before 7 October. Okay? People, my family, is from central Gaza, Gaza city itself. We are in the hub, in the midtown of Gaza. My family now is displaced on the south. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Rafah. In Rafah and in the middle region, it is at the wider area. Some of the uh, two parts. Some of them in the south, some of them in the middle. My dad didn't want to leave with them. Okay. He stayed in the north in Gaza City. Okay. Our houses and homes were demolished. My dad existed there. He got shot, maybe. May Allah bless his soul if he got shot or he passed away. And my uncle stayed in, in the north as well. So now 80% of the northern part of Gaza has moved or displaced to the southern part. The land now is being under control by the Israeli forces on the ground. They are doing roads. They are doing some ports, they are doing some bases, military bases, to control 
the, the North more in the future or in, the, in this days. Can we say that Palestinians with this war after 7th of October, that they sold the lands of the North? Can we say that? No, we can't. Are they, did they sell it or they were forced to be displaced and move to the South? In your son and my son generations in the future, they will say, oh, the Palestinians, they sold the North part of Gaza in 7 October. So changing the history doesn't re really reflect the true facts, mm -hmm. right? So you can say whatever you can. Why? Because you have the power. You have in the book that I mentioned to you that you have set up all your dirty techniques and thoughts and the plans, how you going to control the whole world, not only Palestine. And that book, that's important for each, every Muslim <clears throat> to understand what the mindset behind these guys, what they want, why they want to manipulate. They want to control the Christians, not Muslims only. They want to manipulate every single industry, finance, education, health, whatever you think and you may not think, they have thought about it in 1905. You see the mindset, how deep it is? It's, I call it, it's a devil mindset. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, yeah, I know, and, and it's, uh, I know there's definitely, uh, uh, you know, anger and, and from generations going back, uh, you know, because of a lot of trauma and loss. It's a huge loss. Obviously, you lost your homes, you lost your land, like you were mentioning. So, I know you mentioned, uh, you know, the, your, your education was in city planning and municipal planning, but how was your education like from when you were young? I think you said you left Gaza for university, but when you were young from school age into high school, you were in Gaza until mm. what age? How, how was your education there? Wow, you you get me a flash on the back history of my oldest in the school days, brother Nabil. Our our life, believe me, is terrible since we were born. From the day we first day we come to the world, from our mom's belief, we are in a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Everything is scarce, everything is little, everything is not existing. Everything you have to fight to get it. There is no electricity on regular basis. There is no water. Yeah? There is no perfect shelter for you to, to rest. It's a family, a family house is over there. That's the culture. We all live together, families, grandparents, parents, grandkids, wives, everybody. But with all that crowd, we have a separation. Mm -hmm. Ladies are separated from the men. We yeah, don't get together. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Education-wise, you know, Gaza currently, or Palestine, Gaza, let's say I talk about Gaza. Gaza is considered one of the most poor or the poorest population on earth nowadays. Vice versa. Gaza is the most crowded city on the planet. Yes. Area-wise. Yeah. Okay, and the, how many people? Plus, vice versa. Gaza has the most percentage of educated people in the world. Do you know this? You don't know. That's interesting, yeah. Very interesting. Why? Because our grandparents, they learned from their mistakes. They wanted, they were all workers, they were farmers, our grandparents. They saw that the Jews had took control of their land because of their power, because of their education, blah, 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 blah. So our grandparents decided whatever I have, I will dedicate that as an investment for educating my kids. Our grandparents may not have the meal for today's iftar. Yeah? But they have for sure saved some money for their kids' education. So they, they thought the mindset was, by education, I will be free. Mm -hmm. So, and they invested in our education. That's why 
If you look at my generations, okay, we are the educated generation. If you all, if you took at my dad's and my uncle's generations, they are no into more trades professions. Yeah. Yeah. So this made a difference, and that's why today you see the clash between Palestine and Israel, not Hamas and Israel. Mm-hmm. Palestine and Israel. Uh, you know, so in Gaza, when you're living there, what were the freedoms that you had, you can say, and what were the restrictions maybe imposed by Israel and, you know, obviously given the situation? Yeah, I was coming to the education part, by the way. Yeah. Uh, freedoms, I cannot, I cannot tell you that unless we are from, uh, free from our hearts. We are free from our hearts. Nowadays, people say the whole world is occupied unless Palestine and Gaza are free. And I agree with that. Because we, we haven't accepted the colonization mindset that we will be occupied in our brains. They occupied us on physical grounds, okay, but our brains are still free. That's why we call us, uh, ourselves as a free people. Mm-hmm. I have lived in the Western countries. Where is the freedom? I'm living in Canada. Do you think Canada is a free country? For me, not. Explain. Yeah. Share your thoughts. With, in what way you think, uh, you know... You, you, you're allowed to, you are allowed to talk in a certain, to a certain extent. You're not allowed to exceed that extent or limit. Mm-hmm. Once you exceed that limit, you are under control, buddy. Makes okay. Sense. Makes sense. No, makes sense. <laughs> that is the, uh, you know, the temperament these days from a lot of people. They're like, you know, we have freedom of speech, but uh, there's a certain red line. If you cross that line, yeah, uh, and there's a lot of restrictions, and you are, if you make the wrong people upset, then uh, you can get into a lot of trouble. There's definitely something. We saw. I hope this speech doesn't <laughs> make them upset too. But uh, yeah, this is a very important topic, especially as we're living in such countries. We should be raising some concerns about how free are we? How yeah. free? If we were free, okay, with all the rallies and the protests happened in front of Parliament Hill and uh, Ottawa and all these squares, okay, in support and solidarity of Palestine, okay, we should have action. Till day, the Foreign Affairs Minister came out and said, oh, we will ban the the weapons to Israel exporting, okay? Okay, you banned it on the media because you already allowed the Palestinians to come to Canada in the media. But on actual things, you put unbelievable conditions for the eligibility criteria to bring our families. And I am one of these people who are not eligible to bring my families. Although you, Canada, has allowed Palestinians to come to Canada on the media. But on actual life, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So back to my education. The education, the curriculum, the curriculum was put by the Egyptians at my time when I was studying Gaza. Later on, <clears throat> it was controlled by the Israelis because they were living with us in Gaza till 1996. <clears throat> yes, when, that's right. When they went out of uh, from Gaza from their side by at Ariel Sharon time, yeah? So, yeah, I need to take a deep breath. It's emotional, brother. It is. It's it very is. emotional. It's very tough. You see, when yeah. I'm talking, uh, I have a PTSD. Oh, yeah. if I want to go into details and actions that I have faced during my daily life, okay, I won't be a normal human. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Anyway, don't. It's fine. Yeah, you <laughs> take your time. No, we don't need to rush through it. And if uh, you know you're uncomfortable or anything, uh, no, no, yeah, no force. It's all right. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Yeah. So back to the education. Let's do it. The education. Uh, we want to be educated. Our willingness from inside for the sake of ourselves, the future. And for the sake of helping our parents and families, we wanted to be, by all senses, to be educated people. Because we wanted to understand why we are the only nation till date occupied. Why? Why the whole world is, has free countries, except us Palestinians, we don't have it. Why? A lot of whys. Since our childhood, these whys grows with us. 
and we always seek the answers for it by getting educated. So education, you're allowed to, to get the basic education. Yeah. Then our, our ancestors, they started establishing our own universities because it was hard, tough to go and study abroad. And it, plus it is costly and we're not that rich people and blah, blah, blah. So they started establishing their own universities. I won, when I finished my high school, I won at the College of Agriculture Engineering in the Islamic University in Gaza. I didn't want that, that profession. Mm -hmm. I made uh, an argument with my dad that I am a hardworking student and I needed to study engineering or medicine. So I have to go study abroad. And luckily, I, I was able to convince him, and alhamdulillah, I went. But the education, not only education, every single service in Gaza is double standard by Israel. For example, you're allowed to bring to your home country whatever you, uh, you want to import. Okay? I cannot import a tissue, a toothpick. Okay, to Gaza or to Palestine without Israeli permission. And you know that if it cost a normal human in his own country to import a container of tissues or toothpicks from China, it cost you a thousand bucks, for example, to custom clear it and import it and all the, uh, do this all the formalities. Okay, it cost me as a Palestinian 10,000 or 15,000. Okay. The, the 1,000 costed you, it cost me 10 or to 15,000 to get it imported. So you're saying it's 10 to 15 times the cost? I'm not sure about the exact number, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to over-exaggerate how much they are imposing nonsense fees, like what, what their finance minister, Smotaric, yeah. okay? Yeah. He's imposing right now. He's saying that we, whatever custom, custom money that we have obtained from Palestinians, they were transferring them to Mahmoud Abbas, our garbage leader. I don't like you. <laughs> uh, they were transferring it. He's saying now, because of the war in Gaza, we are in shortage of funds, so we will take all this money accumulated from the Palestinians' imports. Okay? So the Palestinian authorities, they used to pay the, the wages and salaries for their employees. Now this guy is not rich. He doesn't want even that money to be given to the Palestinian authority. So this is occupation. We are occupied on the brain. We, can, we don't, when they made a peace agreement, did we make, oh, by the way, this is a great question. Did we make a peace agreement? Did we try to come into peace with the Israelis? Yes, we did. How many times? Not only one time, two times, three times, four times, millions of times, I call it. Okay? Did they respect them? No. Do you know there is a peace agreement between Israel and Palestinian Authority in Oslo under the sponsorship of America? Okay. Was it, what is it called officially on the official documents? It is called peace process. Yep. Not peace agreement. You made an agreement with me, so why didn't you make it, call it peace agreement? Because when you may come into an agreement with me, okay, we have resolved all the issues and we came into agreement. You put an end for the thing. With peace process, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. The peace agreement in Oslo happened 1993 or 94. 94. Till day, I haven't seen the results of it. I was at that time, I was at the last year of my high school, and I was about to leave to Turkey to study my university. Okay? Till day, I haven't seen peace. Where That's is the peace you're talking about? 30 years. Yeah, 30, 30 years. years. Till that day, how many settlements have been there mm -hmm. after the peace agreement that you made? 
how many settlements were built in uh, West Bank West Bank and Jerusalem yeah so by the way i want to also mention when people got into rallies and they call uh, from the river to the sea palestine will be free palestine will be free from the river of jordan the west bank of jordan river okay to the sea to the mediterranean sea where is adjacent to gaza yeah. Yeah? yeah yeah so this is the land of palestine and this is the complete land we're talking about yeah yeah now netanyahu is saying we will not allow any state behind the west of the jordan river yeah he knows what he's talking but the whole world is not knowing what he's really meaning yeah we know what he means palestinians we know we know how to deal with these guys we used to <coughs> to play with them with them games fighting each other so in school you mean or no nah, yeah this is leading me to one very interesting <laughs> story in a school the education one day brother nabil we were going to school on normal regular basis we went there the ring is the bell rings at 7:30 i guess 7:30 we went we were, did all the formalities and we entered the, uh, the classrooms the school day is starting the teacher coming oh okay there is a protest happening some people from outside come to the school they evacuate the kids and they get them out to the streets so they make a protest <clears throat> I was a hard working student. So I don't go into protest like that normally. I said, "Okay, I'm living 10 minutes from the school. Let me walk to my home." I went back home. I put my bag. I talked to my mom. I ate my breakfast and blah 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 blah. Then as a kid, I was at the age of 11 or 12. <clears throat> I went outside of our house where we meet as kids and we play marble. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we gathered with our neighborhood kids and we started playing marble. 10 12 uh, little kids. <laughs> While we playing uh, playing marbles uh two two jeeps of military Israeli military forces IDF they're passing by our street. We stayed. We kept playing marble. They stopped in front of us. This is a daily. This is a normal day for us. In Gaza, mm-hmm. this is a normal day. This is a story for me as a kid. They they saw us playing marbles. They stopped. Come on here. Yeah. We went there. They were <coughs> really gunned. Yeah. So. We're little kids, so we started to hesitate who goes first, who goes second, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Makes sense. Yeah, he said, go on a line. Stay on a line, make a queue. Okay, we, who's going to be the first one now? Everybody is pushing the other one to go to be the first one. Yeah, so he said, you come first. I went first, okay, and I stood. He said, come on, come closer. He's sitting on the jeep like that, and the gun with him like that, and all his gears are on. He said, what are you doing here? I said, we're playing marble. Okay. Boom! Go. He's what? He slapped you? He slapped me. We did nothing. Mm-hmm. That is slap till day I'm feeling it. I was 11 years old. Today I am 48 years old. So if you oppress me that way, do you want me to send you a rose or do you want me to love you? And all the 12 kids who were playing with me had the same slap. What do you, that man, that soldier, face, till day I am seeing it, now I see him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the mentality of that soldier? Why he did that to me? Why, what did I do wrong to him? He's occupying my land. He's living with me in my city. He came and stole all my resources. Okay? I'm playing in front of my house. Yeah. I didn't go protest against them. 
with the protest in the school. Okay? I played Marvel in front of my house, and he came, stopped, and slapped me. Why? Where is the human rights that the Western uh, society has established? <coughs> One, <coughs> One of the strongest active organizations in Palestinian story is United Nations. Yeah. For me, as a Palestinian, I am saying the harm is coming from United Nations mm -hmm. to us. We will not be free unless we hear that one day there is no United Nations in Gaza. Why? Because I work for United Nations. Okay. I worked two and a half years with United Nations in their headquarter office in Gaza. And when before I entered that organization for war, I was praying, my Allah, please give me a chance to have an opportunity to work with this organization. From outside, it was looking prestigious, nice, good paid salary. When I entered and I worked there, I discovered that <clears throat> the main reason for this occupation To survive till date for 76 years is the existence of United Nations. They are the agents and representation of the Zionism <coughs> and Israel. Okay. Can one of the projects. Yeah. One of the projects we did with them was creating master plans for emergency shelters. For refugees, call it whatever you call it. Look at the diplomatic name. Uh -huh. Look at the twisting of information and facts. So relocation of existing refugees in case of any natural disaster. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Very nice. Makes sense. As a city planner, I loved it. Oh, I want to work on that project. I want to help my refugees. Right. Okay. What's the uh, the main goal of the project, sir? Okay. We will try to utilize the parks and the schools and public amenities to accommodate these people in the time of natural disaster. Well done. Well said. Okay. We started our research. We made our uh, design. <coughs> we implemented our plans, and we submitted the project. Okay. Ten days after the submission day, that whole border area in Rafa, okay, between Egyptian borders and Gaza border, was demolished and destroyed by IDF, Israeli Defense Forces. Why? Because they had the plan. That time, at Hosni Mubarak time, and that time, It was the start of building tunnels on the border area. Okay. So they wanted to clear that portion. Okay. They nominated it, or they gave the bid to the United Nations to build that project, to design it. Okay. Us, as Palestinian engineers, we wanted to work. They had some work placement opportunities in the United Nations under specific contract conditions. And then we wanted to help our refugees. We designed, we did for disaster, natural disasters. Okay, We discovered that after the plans got ready, United Nations has shared the plans and the project information with the Israeli Defense Forces Okay, and told them, okay, now the, the area is ready. Now you can proceed with your plan. So it was not natural disaster, it was... It was a <laughs> humankind made disaster. Yeah, yeah. Israeli. Of course. So another project by World Bank, I worked it. I worked with World Bank too, with my experience in Gaza City Municipality. <sighs> Naming and the treating, look at the luxury names. I love the names, you know. That's why for me, 
as a Palestinian, in my dictionaries, in my books, there is no, I told you this before, there is no word called diplomacy. I hate diplomacy. Mm-hmm. For me, there is no diplomacy. With this type of guys and people and the mindset they are dealing with the Muslims all over the world, okay, they don't have diplomacy. There is no diplomacy. You, you slap me, I will slap you. Mm-hmm. Okay? You love me, I will love you. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, naming and numbering of street names and houses in Gaza City. Okay. At Gaza Municipality. So this was a World Bank project? World Bank, funded by World Bank. Okay. <clears throat> this is the external name. What the project actually is, okay? Go send your surveyors to the streets, collect some data, information. Nothing has to be related to naming. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Collect me details about each and every single house in Gaza. How many square foot? How many floors? What is the made up of the roofing? Is it concrete? Is it shingle? Is it asbestos? Okay. How many pe- rooms inside? How many people? Are they relatives? Are they not? How many kids? How many females? How many males above 18? What are they doing? What, 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 what? You look at the survey questionnaire paper, okay, you won't believe this is a naming and numbering street project as, a, as an, a, a, an educated person. There is something behind it. So it's it. very detailed, senses, detailed, more than senses even. Yeah. <clears throat> we did it. Why? Why we did it? We, d- we are not aware at that time what the main purpose of it. We're still young, fresh graduate people. Mm-hmm. And this is like job creation program for unemployed people to decrease the unemployment rate in Palestinian Authority areas. Mm-hmm. Funded by World Bank. You work with us on temporary basis, contract for three months. Just excuse this project and you're done. You don't have any rights, you don't have any liabilities, you don't have any, what they call it, compensation later on. You got just a cut salary, $300, $500 a month, and that's it. Get out of here. We get the information we needed from you. So, that's it, and they went into the site. And they collected the information. We entered them onto the database at GIS. Mm-hmm. Okay. We put them on CDs at the end of the project. We handed it to the management. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. Thank you, brother. The desks we submitted to the management, okay, has been transformed to the World Bank. Yeah. As a funder. The World Bank shared these desks of information with IDF. Now, IDF knows Nabil's exact room in his house and what type of house and who's living with Nabil. And if Nabil is not a good guy and wanted for them, in their opinion, because (coughs) their wanted persons is our heroes. When they say we... Nabil is wanted for the IDF, it means for Palestinians, Nabil is a Palestinian hero. So this is where comes the European double standards. Yeah? (laughs) Yesterday I was talking with one of my friends, he's a lawyer from England. He said, sorry guys, see? There is pain inside. For sure. I feel it. No, I, I understand. I can't breathe. Please take a moment. No problem. So my land is my land. You stole my land. I want my land back. <coughs> mm-hmm. That's my right. And these rights 
has been declared by United Nations declarations. Your double standard set up organization. And by the way, United Nations has been <laughs> established and founded, okay, in a nightclub in, in New York by Jewish people. So these are tricky organizations. The purpose from outside is something and internally is something else. But, uh, you know, with, with the October 7 events and attack that happened, they are blaming UNRWA staff. What WRA? It's, a U- it's the U- United Nations that works in Gaza. Okay. And many, many, I know, like you said, you oh, work for no, UN well, yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, so they, they work in Gaza and they employ a lot of Gazans. Yes. And uh, it's like you said, it's a job creation uh, engine as well. Yes. Um, so they blame that a lot of the fighters Where? were working also for UN. So now it's b- they're blaming UN itself, uh, you know, that uh, under their watch, they mm. knew what was happening or they are complicit in the actions that took place. Okay. And so now even UN is being blamed yes. uh, because some of the staff that was working in UN in Gaza was or might have been involved in what happened on October 7th. Yes, I totally agree with your statement. UN is complicit. But UN is complicit in the continuation of the occupation for 76 years. And what they are claiming, based on no actual information, this is, was published by Israeli ministers and the prime minister as a propaganda. And the Western society, okay, excuse me, they are brainwashed. And their medias, what they are watching on their TVs every day, okay, is a brainwashing agents. And if you look into the roots of these news organizations, they are all funded by Israelis or American Jews. So... As a Palestinian, yes, UNRWA, United Nations, yes. is a creation, uh, is helping Palestinian refugees. I am not considered a refugee, and my family is not a refugee, because I told you, you we are originated from Gaza. From there, yeah. <clears throat> so I had a question. Um, you know, you said the World Bank and United Nations, they help create jobs in, you know, by giving different kind of projects, even if the projects end up in the wrong hands, like you mentioned. Um, and they're employing thousands of people uh, in Gaza. But are there freedom to establish like business? Are there businesses that you know Palestinians in Gaza own and they can employ you know hundreds of people or thousands of people? Or are you able to start a business? Maybe you're importing products from China or from other parts of the world that come from the Mediterranean Sea or through land crossing. And that will help people earn money and also make money and, and establish business. Is, is there any freedom like that or there's no such thing as... There is, there is a freedom of businesses, yeah. As a private sector, you're allowed to do and import and do whatever you want to a certain extent, to a certain scale. You are not allowed to exceed some levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, My family background by grandparents is business. Okay, And the business in uh, Palestine or in Gaza especially is very risky. Why? Because the circle of economy doesn't keep going. It goes for a month, two, three, four months, and then it collapses. You have a war like what's happening right now. Seven months, okay? Tell me which private sector company can survive. And our companies are basic and simple companies and businesses. We are not a huge like Amazon. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're not like a huge like Walmart. No, we are little companies, self-employed. Okay, the maximum you can employ one, two, three, four, five people. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Sense. There are some good businessmen that they have been in such industries for years and years. They have holdings. They have hundreds of people employed for them. Yeah. But as I said, the stability of the politics and the clash between these guys and us doesn't allow the businesses to, what they call it, uh, flourish. Flourish, yeah. Yeah, to flourish. 
So there is always discontinuation. There is always a break. There is always a collapse. There is always a, a come down. <clears throat> I told you my dad is a businessman. One, I, this is a very interesting human story I would love to share about my dad for the sake of his soul. One day, after I graduated from Turkey, I went back to Gaza. My dad, he used to own a shop adjacent to the house. May Allah reward all of you and all your sacrifices and your parents and grandparents. Uh, they went through a lot and the memories are very tough. But inshallah with, uh, you know, uh, with God, with Allah, there's a big reward for them and uh, in the paradise. So inshallah, whatever we lose in this world, uh, we all have to go. Uh, you know, I know it's tough. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So, I was newly married. I was terminated from my job in the United Nations. So I was always standing with my dad in his job to help him out. That time it was Gilad Shalit time when the resistance group has caught one soldier in Gaza for 2011, I guess. Okay. No, until 2011, even more. Earlier, I can't remember the year. <sighs> so, my dad' business was doing great. During that time, but what was his business? Just like a general electronics, story? electronics, and uh, you know all these music systems and all these studio systems. Okay, he's an importer of it. So. Uh, yeah, at that time the business was not doing great. And we were sitting almost nothing. We were not doing any business. And he knows that I graduated from Turkey and I'm coming here to set up my life and I wanted to start and grow. But the political situation doesn't allow. So while sitting there doing nothing all day long, okay, beggars come by. Please. For Allah said, give me one dollar, give me two dollar. <clears throat> now, before that, my dad, while I'm sitting and we had nothing to do, he's saying, please take this money that I have, the only money in my pocket, take it, go back home, you're still in your marriage, buy a sandwich for you and your wife, and go home. Enough. I tell him, no, I don't want, I can walk to my home. <clears throat> and keep the money, the last money, in your pocket. He said, no. He keeps, we keep arguing. You take it, no, you leave it. You take it, no, leave it. You take it, no, leave it. Out of sudden, a beggar, a lady came. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hey, for Allah's sake, please give me something. My dad put his hands in his pocket, and he gave it to her. The last money in his pocket. In our both of us pockets. <coughs> so as a young man, fresh graduate, I got angry at my dad. I told him, oh my God, are you crazy? What are you doing? You're giving your last money, which is two shekels. Two shekels is half American dollar. Yeah. We're fighting for two, for a half American dollar. And mm -hmm. our two men pockets. Palestinian occupied by Israeli millionaires. 
while Palestine is one of the richest countries by the world by, in the world by resources, and you can <laughs> explore that. So anyway, make sure the short story, the story short. I got angry to my dad why you're giving the lady some only money we have. Okay, I didn't want to take it. How come you, I wanted to, for you to keep it? How are you gonna move? My dad is, looked at me and he smiled. Okay. He told me, son, you have to learn something in life. You do good deeds. You do good deeds, uh, good deeds and throw it to the ocean. Okay? If the return comes, it doesn't come to me, if the return of that good deed doesn't come to me, it will come to my kids in the future. Or it will come after I go past this world. That's true, yeah. I, I kept silent and it was a very good lesson to me that I learned how to do good deeds. I, after that, the siege happened. I decided to go out of country and I went to Dubai. I started looking for a job. Okay. Is it easy to leave? You know, no, when you, nothing easy. It takes a process. There is, guys, <laughs> <laughs> guys, let me put this clear. Please, don't ask us break hurting questions. Nothing easy in Palestine. Nothing easy. Breathing is not easy. Electricity is not easy. You living your daily life sitting on a chair like this, you are sweating because there is no electricity, there is no fans, there is no air conditions. Okay? You sit in the hut, Makes sweating. Sense. Makes sense, yeah. Okay? You are living in the cold, okay? You are shivering because there is no heater on. Okay? You are leaving your house, you want to go to your work, there is no money in your pocket. Guys, you want to go to your work. You want to go take a taxi or a cab or anything, okay? <clears throat> we don't have cabs. We have, like, shuttles, okay? You pay him half dollar or quarter dollar, okay? And they take you from this point to that point, okay? So you go leave your home without money in your pocket. You go there, the cars, the shuttle cars, okay, they don't have gas, they have to wait two nights before in order to fit their cars. So nothing easy. Of course. This question yeah. is not applicable for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to imagine, uh, you know, the reality. Yeah, very hard. I would love you to invite one of our brothers who had the chance to go visit Jerusalem. There is in our community some guys who visited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buddhist. I also know some people yeah. they were able to go. Yeah. So these guys, they saw the actual on-ground actions on daily basis, hmm. okay? And take their opinions from externals. They are not Palestinians. Tell them how is the way between the airport to Jerusalem. Yeah. How many checkpoints did you stop? How many times did you had to empty your luggages, to put them down from the car and open them and check them? <coughs> How many times did you take your ID to present to the IDF soldiers? How many times did you see a soldier hating a Palestinian? How many, how many times did they allow you as a foreign citizen to pass and the Palestinian stayed there for long hours? How many times did you see a tank shot? How many times did you see a soldier shot? Do you know the soldiers while they are in their shifts, okay? They play with their guns on Palestinian bodies. Oh, okay, I'm gonna hunt that guy. They shot him. How I, I did it? This is the way they are dealing with it. Shuf, <sighs> look, Allah, willingness is uh, on top of all of these guys. They have invented technology. Hmm. Now, the technology is their enemy. Why? Because it is showing the whole world the truth on land, on ground. 
ذا سوشيال ميديا يو مين ذا سوشيال ميديا ان تكنولوجي they thought that they will dominate the world by this in uh, innovations and the creation of social media blah 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 but allah has turned this okay into a good mean to showcase their oppression make sense yeah yeah so nowadays the whole world is watching what's happening we didn't palestinian didn't invent facebook or tiktok or anything okay but we're using them to show what israeli forces are doing on the ground so now they are helping us indirectly by allah willingness <coughs> so what was the question is there anything easy nothing easy no for sure <laughs> when i left uh, to dubai yeah so oh i have the answer in my story and my adventure of getting out from gaza in 2008 to dubai for war purposes okay how long does it take a normally human to cross a border answer please maybe half an hour or less <laughs> a border if you want to go to us here few minutes few minutes okay so you're in line with the car and then you cross it's not too long thank you very much <laughs> yes It took me eight months to cross Rafah border in 2008. Eight months? Eight months. I used to call it with my friends among us, Ghazwa. You know Ghazwa? Ghazwa, Uhud, Ghazwa, yeah, Badar, yeah. Ghazwa. Yeah. What is it in English, Ghazwa? It's like an expedition. A battle, or, yeah, yeah, expedition. Yeah. <laughs> so the, my friends, they will ask me, when, I, when is your next ex- expedition? <laughs> When are you going to, going to Rafah border in order to cross? So for eight months, like you were waiting for approvals and permission. Like uh-huh. What was the... <sighs> At that time, I told you it was Chalit time. Yeah. Chalit, the soldier that the resistance hold in their hands. And they decided all borders are closed. The election happened. Oh, we are Gaza, Gaza Strip is under siege. Nobody to go out, nobody to get in, no goods to get in, no goods to get out. Fish. Wow. Yes. So not even imports? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> it's a mind-blowing. Yeah, people, they don't believe. They think that we're lying. Yeah? Please, I invite you, okay, next summer, whenever... I go to Palestine, I will invite you officially to come with me. And you will witness this in, in your eyes. Are we allowed to visit Gaza? I know right now it's the war and everything, but in other times... If we make the normal uh, coordinations with the uh, related authorities, you can get in. Into other, Gaza. other than it's better to go to heaven, easier than coming to Gaza. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people that have gone to... Uh, <coughs> gone to visit Jerusalem and all the cities there and they have to go through obviously uh, Tel Aviv and land and I know some people that when after they land they had to spend I think six to eight hours in the airport just interrogation they, yeah. s- they, s- they separate all the family members and each one they ask a lot of questions and then you wait for many hours and eventually they let them in and then they have to be you know certain areas and everything they enjoyed the trip itself seeing Jerusalem seeing the historical sites uh, Masjid al-Aqsa and Dome of the Rock and the the in the muslim quarter in in mm. jerusalem and in some of the historical places but uh, getting in is very it makes you you know lose patience it's so, thank you very much <laughs> and this is, this is this is especially for uh, foreign nationals yes and okay. they're a citizen of imagine canada imagine if you were a citizen of palestine can you imagine yeah for sure first of all you're not allowed to use their, their airports Second of all, you're not allowed to use their own streets, roads, roads, the roads on the ground, okay, they have ma- made by discrimination as well. Tell me a country in the whole world that is based on their religious belief. Why U.S. is insisting on the whole world, okay, that Israel is the only Jewish state? Why? <laughs> Why? Why you're not allowing Saudi Arabia to be a religious uh, city, a uh, country? Why you are corrupting Saudi Arabia and you're uh, bringing your 
Western culture and your Western nudity and pornographic and parties into the holy land of Mecca? Why, as a Muslim, I am not allowed to say that? Why? Okay, why you're allowing Israel? Okay, U.S., Joe Biden, did you change your diapers yet to, for today or not yet? If you didn't, please go change it. Second, okay, you are and your prime, uh, your foreign uh, minister, foreign affairs minister, uh, Blinken, Anthony Blinken, okay. I'm not accepting you, uh, both of you and your state as a mediator for the clash between Israel and Palestine. You are not an honest mediator, okay. We don't accept your mediation. We ha you have sponsored some peace process, not agreement, okay, between us and your ally, Israel, didn't respect it, and we have respected. So we are the oppressed people, and your friend is the oppressor. Go punish your oppressor and make it one standard policies for all the humanity, and then come mediate between me and them. I don't accept your mediation. This is for the U.S. Mm -hmm. We don't like him. We don't want them to be a mediator. Mm -hmm. Okay? I might accept China. I might accept Russia. But not U.S. I might accept any just and fair one standard mediator. Don't talk to me, U.S. Go talk to your oppressor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay? So you are not a fair and just mediator. Well, you can... um, uh, Qatar is trying to be a mediator in, in uh, this conflict and other conflicts. I know they've... Uh... What are your thoughts with Qatar? There are, ma there are main mediators and they are sub-mediators. Mm -hmm. U.S. is the main mediator. Of course, yeah. yeah? So whatever U.S. says, Qatar, the sub-mediator, will try to work it out. Okay, with all the respect to all, anybody, to everybody, yeah? But Qatar doesn't have the power to superimpose their decisions on the Israelis. And oh, even yeah. currently with the current war ongoing, even the U.S., okay, doesn't have the power. But what could be, you know, how can we move forward? You know, October 7th happened as, uh, and in the beginning people, you know, said that, okay, this is because the people who are oppressed in Gaza, they've been blockaded for so many years. They lashed out and they struck out against the oppressors. But then the stories came out that there were so many atrocities and, uh, you know, all of the different media stories around what happened. What, what do you think exactly happened that day? And, you know, what is your thoughts around October 7th? Okay, great question. Thank you. October 7th, for me and for the Palestinians, free people. There are Palestinians not a free people. They chose not to be free people. Was it a result of some consequences that happened before? Yes, it was. I was visiting Gaza in last July. Just last year? Last year. Uh, you won't believe, subhanAllah. After 13 years of not going to Palestine as a visit, I visited only last July. Yeah. My dad was waiting for me just to see me because he was scared that he will pass away or something that he didn't see me for 13 years and my kids and my family. So, to the point, <coughs> the whole Gazans knew that there is a war happening. There will be a war of destruction gonna happen to us on Gaza and they will eliminate us. This is the way they, talk, they were telling us. Why? Yes. Have you seen Benjamin Netanyahu, the F war, the prime minister, <laughs> when he went to the United Nations and he showed the map of Palestine and especially Gaza that he wanted to create a prosperity economy with Saudi Arabia and the normalized states of Arab countries, which is shame on all of them who normalize the relations. Uh, and the project of creating a Ben Gurion channel from the Mediterranean Sea up to Saudi Arabia border for the, uh, the prosperity of the Middle East region economically. 
this is the project that they are trying to implement right now. This is a gas pipeline. It's a, it's about gas pipeline plus a water channel. Yeah. So now geographically in Gaza they don't want Gaza City, especially the north part they are talking about. That part they are proposing to have a water channel connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the uh, Saudi Arabia with the Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, the Red Sea. Okay. And that will be a substitute of Suez channel. I see. Okay. Yeah. So once this channel is built, there is no Suez channel need for anymore. The whole world chain. Why do you think the Yemenis, the Houthis, has been insisting on getting into this battle? Why? Because also they want to preserve and <coughs> save their, uh, what do you call it, international trade, the supply chains passing the Red Sea. So Netanyahu project was an alternative solution for all these Red Sea channels in the, Mid- in the Middle East areas, who is Yemen, Cairo, or, or Egypt, as a weather channel. Hamas and the Palestinians, forget Hamas, the Palestinians, since we are living these conditions, we are aware of the plan. We know it. You see the education, why our parents invested in us, in our education. Now we know their plans ahead of time. (coughs) So, and they were decided that there is no solution with these Gazans people. We let them alone in 2003, when Sharon went out uh, from Gaza, okay, and... We put them on under siege for 16 years, and they are still resisting, and they are growing, and they are uh, living their lives. Yeah? We get adapted. We have a special technique. That's why I was saying our ingredients are different. We have been adapted to be flexible. This is the way that the circumstances that they have imposed on us created us. That's why we are, I'm saying we are unique. We are unique. The way we can tolerate things, nobody on this planet can tolerate it. We've been tolerating it for 76 years. You haven't, been the, you haven't gained the experience of tolerating. Your tolerance level is different than my tolerance level. You can, you, maybe you're hungry now because you're fasting. Okay, I'm not hungry. I can fast another seven days. I don't mind. No food. No food. I'm adapted to that. This is the situation you, you, my enemy, created for me. You imposed it to me. You have made me like that. You see me. You know me for years now. Okay? I'm kind of not a quiet person. My kids are telling me, Baba, you're not a chill. You're not come down. <laughs> yes, I am not. Yeah. Yes, I am proudly not come down. And I don't want to be a come down because, in my opinion, when you are come down, you have learned the Western culture to become a hypocrite. You have to be, as a Muslim, not fearing anybody unless Allah. We have to be the forefront of protecting our religion. If we are not protecting our religion, do you want Joe Biden to protect it? Or Benjamin Netanyahu? Look at their <coughs> religious leaders what they are talking about their plans, about the Muslim Ummah. So, <coughs> Palestine is not only for Palestinians. We are the forefront line who is protecting the whole Ummah. I swear my God, and inshallah, that day doesn't come. But if it comes, please remember me. <sighs> if we Palestinians collapse, and get defeated, okay? Please, please, please wait for your next turn. Your turn is coming. Do you remember? I'm putting my eyes on this camera. You will remember this. If we get defeated, the Muslim Ummah and the next neighboring countries, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, okay? Yemen, 
Pakistan, India, next, next, Turkey, next, all these Muslim countries, count how much you want, okay? You will be next. And if it is not today, uh, and if it is not happening to you right now, do you think, I lived in Turkey in 10 years, Turkey has never been a stable country, economically. Yeah. Every, every single year, there is some certain actions <coughs> happening here and there. Do you think they happen randomly? Do you think these actions are happening randomly? I know, I speak their language. Okay? No. They don't want a Muslim government to come. Erdogan, although Erdogan, we, we, I, I have some clashes on you, contradictions with you, Abijim, <laughs> Hujam. <coughs> okay? But uh, if you are a real Muslim leader, then please do your responsibilities. Don't be a hypocrite saying something and doing something else. I understand the Turkish culture very well. So please wake up as a Muslim nation. Your Muslim need to wake up. Now my, my next question, what can be done from us as Muslims to support Palestine? Please tell us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah. think? Do you think? I mean, just just to ask another question there uh, before we get into that, mm. is Israel uh, punishing Palestinians or Gazans specifically? Is this a genocide? What do you think? Is this uh, they're trying to wipe it out? Or? This is this is not a genocide itself. It is an intended genocide with intention, with a plan. This is a planned genocide. The intention. Guys, are we deaf? Are we idiots? Are we dumb? Why don't we read what they talk? They're prime ministers on the media. What they talk? What they say? Don't you remember the peg, gallant, at the beginning of the war, when he said in Hebrew language, I speak four languages, by the way, I speak their language, Hebrew also I speak it. Oh, wow. Yeah. When he said, there is no water, there is no, no electricity, there is no food, and there is no Dalek. You know what is Dalek? There is no fuel. The whole world is generated by fuel. Electricity, cars, factories, manufacturing, everything fuel. Okay? So they don't want to this. Is this an intention for genocide? The example I gave you of soldiers playing with their guns by killing Palestinians, now by destroying the whole city, is not a genocide. They're playing games. You know? You haven't seen the... What they call it? The, the drone. The drone that killed four people walking. Yeah, I saw the video. Yeah. Yeah, Isn't that media. intended? Yeah. Isn't that a plan? Isn't that a screen like this? A soldier sitting and watching and saw these four guys and two of them were killed and then they followed the third and followed the fourth? This is not an intention. This is not a plan. Yeah, so, I think that caused a lot of issues on social media. Many people are questioning, you know, how was that allowed to happen? And uh, and I think Israel is investigating who did it, why they did it. But there's a lot of cause for concern. Okay. Uh, you, every single word is leading to a different debate. This session <laughs> need, sure. need to be repeated 100 million times in order to catch up with what's going on. Of course, yeah. Okay, investigations. You mentioned the word investigations. I don't believe on a trustfully transparent investigation. Why? Okay. You remember a report called Goldstein. Goldstein report on the war of 2008 happened. Okay, and this is a Goldstein as an American. Do you know who's Goldstein? My doctor here is from Goldstein. Goldstein in English it is called Goldstein. Goldstein, but in Hebrew they call it Goldstein. <coughs> okay, he's a Jewish. He's a settler. My doctor, my doctor of blood pressure is a settler in Jerusalem. His photos in the clinic where Canada is a free country, is putting the occupied land of Javo, Akka, Haifa in his office. And as a Palestinian, I go, I know these cities and I know these houses are Palestinian. And he puts them with some Hebrew writing under them. Did you talk to him? I talk. He's okay. my doctor. And one time he read the, 
there's a discussion between me and him about what's going to happen with us, between us and you. What, what's, what's the end of our uh, clash? Yeah. Yeah, there is no end. There is no end, and this is not my, my word. This is the Quran and Hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam story. We are under Sara'a. What is Sara'a? Sara'a is a war, clash, contradicting, okay? Between, the, between us and them till the hereafter day. Unless we liberate our country, okay, and free it from them. There is no. Brother, how can I make a solution with somebody who's not admitting my existence on my own land? How, how can I accept somebody who wants to kick me out of my land and bring other people from other cultures on my place? I told you I loved your house. I loved your studio. I'll kick you out of, from your house and I'll... You're not allowed to come back so to your they, house. You know, they, everyone talks about uh, two-state solution. They want to establish two-state solution. Many countries are pushing Canada, U.S., many others. They, they say that they are going for a two-state solution. So what do you think about that? Is that something that will be acceptable by the Palestinians? Or that's this not... Is, uh, this, is, this is in a short-term uh, periodical stage, okay? Uh, it's acceptable. Uh, we were talking about Rafa and... Surrendering and the windshield of, uh, of the human. Yeah. So the plan is there. Yeah. And the intention is to destroy and uh, ethnic cleans everybody in Gaza and Palestine. So they want to push them into Egypt or? They don't, they don't want Palestinians on that region. Mm-hmm. They want to clear the way for their full Jewish state. Okay, so they started it with Gaza because if Gaza dies, the rest is easy. Right? So, what they will do, push it to Egypt, I can assure you because Sisi is their agent. Sisi is their agent. And during my July visit to Gaza, I have witnessed his project in the Sinai Desert in the middle of nowhere with surrounded soldier army uh, w- tall walls with the army towers controlling the every single exit and entrance to these communities and they were huge buildings built in the desert and they were as i said surrounded by towers and walls and controlled by soldiers and surprisingly, hundreds of towers, buildings, so empty. You, so the, you're saying empty. So they're building from before. They have. Uh, of course, the plan. I told you the intention and the plan is already is already ready. Now the execution of the plan. What we are seeing now on the TVs is the execution of the plan. The plan. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be that uh, the Hamas attack on October seven. Justification. Uh, Using as a justification for that, but what if Hamas never attacked? It will happen. You know, or if Hamas knew the plan, let's say the Palestinians, they knew the plan that eventually they want to clear out Gaza and push them into Sinai or, you know, and take over into Israel, that area as well. Then is there any benefit to, you know, on October 7 attack is that for a moment of time, they get some, you know, revenge or whatever uh, on, on Israel, but on the flip side is from October 8 onwards, it's full on, you know, their side is suffering. Palestinian side is suffering. They're getting killed, getting bombed. All of Gaza is being destroyed. And now they're going to be pushed into uh, uh, into Sinai. So wouldn't it have been better uh, that they never attack and they just stay quiet? So at least they can stay in Gaza. Yes, yes. Don't give any reason. Yes. Uh, by the way, I answered the, your question at the beginning of the talk. Uh, when I said the intention and the people of Gaza were talking about a destruction war. Yeah. It's already planned and they were expecting it. Yeah. And what Hamas did is not dead because they want to de- uh, do it. Oh, based on the information that they gathered, okay, 
that they know the war is being planned and it's going to be implemented soon. Mm-hmm. And instead of just waiting on my home, sitting, doing nothing, and waiting for the airplanes to come and kill me, okay, no, go, let's get some hostages, okay? So we have a stronger, a stronger uh, thing to, to negotiate with, with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they might use it, let them use it the way they want to use it, okay? But I am under occupation and oppression for 76 years, okay? And every single moment is my right to defend myself and my people. Yes, I have exposed my people and civilians and the whole country into danger situation, and now they are under attack and many of people killed and 30,000 plus killed, 60,000 plus injured, homes destructed, businesses collapsed, blah, 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 yeah. But the freedom is something precious and we are paying the cost of this freedom. Israel doesn't care what will happen to the 1.3 million in Rafah. They don't care. Okay? For them, the best wish is all of them to die. If there was no a human rights and uh, international world to condemn and to stop them from what they are doing, they will do kill all the Palestinians and they don't want to see a Palestinian existing. Mm-hmm. Because they, the Palestinians the only obstacle in for them to establish their Jewish state. The full state. Yeah, the full state. And they, in this state, they don't want to see any Arab or any Palestinian or any Muslim or any Christian or anybody else. They wanted a pure Jewish state. So um, then they'll have to go to West Bank as well, because there's a lot of area. I know there's a lot of illegal settlements happening there. Um, but right now, things seem to be more stable, maybe. No. Or they no. need to go there next as well. No, that's the thing. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I keep uh, repeating myself. The Western media and the media is showing only a small portion of what's going on. What's going on in the West Bank and Jerusalem for years and years, not only now, okay, is worse what's going than what's going on in Gaza. Mm-hmm. Okay? They are in Gaza, we were able to kick them out of Gaza. But they still control the air and the sea, and they can shoot whenever they want. In Jerusalem and in, in West Bank and 1948 lands, the Arab, the Palestinians existing there. This is also our brothers and sisters. We want them, and they are part of the Palestinian nation. So in all these lands, no, they are living with them in their daily lives. And they want, they do what they want every single day. That's why you see their trucks and they, their tanks and the, the soldiers killing every day. Three, five, ten Palestinians every single day. Five injured, ten injured, two houses destroyed, blah, 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 on daily basis. So this is a non-ending process on the West Bank. Yeah. Gaza has a different story because of its unique circumstances. Gaza has been historically, by the way, this is a piece of information that let's put it in, uh, in context for the history. Gaza is the only Arab city that has never been occupied fully by any enemy, historically. Genghis Khan was defeated and his campaign was stopped in Gaza. Napoleon Bonaparte his campaign was stopped in Gaza. So Gaza is Asiya. Asiya is a resistant country. We don't give up and we ne- will never stop and we will not fear anybody unless except Allah. Definitely very interesting uh, story and background and the passion of uh, the Palestinian people and, and, and the passion that you've shared. 
Uh, it's, it's definitely very interesting. Um, so how did you leave Gaza, come to Canada? Maybe, you know, as we as we come to the end of that the discussion, you know, you've come here now with your family uh, and you have family back home. I know you said you've lost your father. Is your mother OK in uh, Gaza? My mother not OK. Nobody in Gaza Strip is OK. Nobody, no house, no business, no car, no donkey, no monkey, no lion, no nothing in Gaza, in Gaza in, in safety. Nobody. My mom has her leg broken. She's a 78 years old mom. She's a heavy woman and she hardly moves in normal basis. Now they broke her legs. My dad is being lost. My brothers and sisters are displaced. They have no food, they have no water, they have no electricity. Hey, do you want me to love you? How you want me to love you, Israel? I would love, I would love to become a friend of you. I used to do businesses with your businessmen, with my dad. My dad spent most of his time doing businesses with the Israelis. Okay, did you respect my dad? Can you bring my dad back to life so I can be loving you and I can be living with you in harmony and in peace? Please. This is one condition for peace, okay? If you want peace with me, I'm living in Canada, in a peaceful country, and I'm originally Palestinian, okay? If you want peace, this condition is a must. Bring my dad to life as similar to millions of dads of Palestinians. Bring them back to life, and we will love you, and we will make peace with you, okay? And but but a plus, I will make peace with you. But at the end, you will be get out of my country. I need my homeland. I am the indigenous people of that land, similar to the indigenous people of here in Canada. So how did you end up in Canada? How did you? Uh... Canada, Canada was my dream country since I was a child at the age of 13. I told you, I'm a good reader, I'm an explorer, researcher. So I always wanted to immigrate to Canada or U.S. But because of being Palestinian, I didn't want to go to U.S. Because U.S. is the head of a snake. How about Canada? What, what is so you ca about Canada? Canada, I told you, it was a dream. I went to study in Turkey, and one day my professor in Turkish language, she told us to write a paragraph. She told us, write in a paragraph, what's your wish, what's your dream? I told her, I want to immigrate to Canada. She told me, why? Why then you're coming to Turkey? Why you didn't go to Canada directly from your country? I told her, because I'm Palestinian. You don't know what Pal uh, Palestinian <coughs> means. There are too many prerequisites that I have to be quali to do in order to qualify to Canada. Then I went back to Palestine and I went back to Dubai and I studied, I worked there to save some money. And then I wanted to come to Canada. I came to Canada because I wanted peace for my kids and my family. I didn't want my kids to face what I have faced. I didn't want my kids to be in a situation where they enter an airport and the airport, the whole airport comes, stands, for this guy with a passport that is not identified, the citizenship that Israel used to give us the co in the old passports called laissez passer the citizenship, the nationality over there is called I undefined. Undefined. There is no nation still on this planet existing with undefined nationality except us. Anyway, after the Oslo Agreement and the Palestinian Authority came back, they gave us a travel documents with Palestinian Authority on top of it. Okay? You are not allowed to travel out of room your house with that document. When you enter uh, any airport in the whole world, they deal, with, they deal with you as an idol, as something... Strange, who's this guy coming to my airport and with this travel document that is I don't understand. So is that what you experienced coming to Canada with that passport or? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I used to be a, 
in a very good position, me and my wife in Dubai. We made a sacrifice with all these incomes and this war in order just to build a better future for our kids. So in Dubai, you were doing very well? Very well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I used to be a regional project manager for seven development master planning projects. Yeah, and my wife, she used to be a senior procurement civil engineer. So we were doing great. But for the future of our kids, we wanted to invest in uh, something, in a citizenship. Yeah? But I told you, Canada was the dream for me. Is Canada the right dream for me? No. Was I right when I chose Canada to be a dream for me? No. What happened? What did it turn out yeah. to be? Canada is a frustrating freedom country, just fake. Just fake, just an image. Just an image. I'm afraid that after this talk, I will be arrested in the free country. Yeah? So, Canada is hypocrite. You see them in, uh, smiling in a diplomatic way in front of your face, and your ba on your back, they, they poke you. This is the difference. This leads us to the, your first question when you said the difference between here and back home. Back home, we are, we are real men. We talk to people in front of their faces. We're not afraid of addressing the facts. We are not hypocrites to be in front of you somebody and on the back somebody else. We are united. In Canada, you are an individualistic society. You teach our kids in your schools that please be yourself. Mm -hmm. Be independent. Don't rely on your parents. Don't listen to blah, 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 blah. Do whatever you want. Back home, no. We are a family. We are stronger when we are family. We are stronger when all the families are united as a society. So That's are you, are you uh, happy here for now? Is Canada being no. gracious? Or no, you want to eventually leave again, go back to somewhere else? Or what's your plan? Yesterday I, yesterday, I met a lady. She's the head of blah, blah, blah organization. I told her. With all what's going on in Palestine and Gaza, my home city, I would love to go to, back to, to my home city rather than staying in a hypocrite country like this in Canada. I don't want Canada. Canada, you ruined my life and you ruined my future and you ruined my profession. And you ruined my kids as well that I came for, for their future. Yeah, You are a fake country. You are such a fake country. Your, your, uh, your Bahlawan prime minister, okay, he's a little kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. This is not the way that a country run. I don't like Canada. I respect Canada. I appreciate Canada welcomed me here, okay. But Canada even didn't allow me to pay back to Canada. The dreaming country about when I was a kid. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> I told you, I'm a, I'm a professional city and regional planner with a project management master degree and sustainability management and blah, 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 blah professions. Okay. And I, I have a bunch of certificates like this much. In Canada, what I'm doing? I, f I finished two programs at Ryerson University and York University. Okay? What am I doing in Canada? What's the job I'm doing? Do you know? No. Okay. I'm a school bus driver, professional school bus driver. Oh my God, Canada. From a regional project manager in seven master planning development projects with hundreds of billions of dollars. Okay? I'm bringing all these experiences and education and background to the country to help and pay back for my dream country that I chose myself, okay? And Canada is letting me school bus driver. Oh, professional school bus driver. Okay, I'm happy to do that for the sake of my kids. But am I happy with you? No, I'm not happy. Is your wife you. working in her field or that's also... Something related to her field, but not purely her field. Mm -hmm. So Canada is a brain drain country. They drain your brains. They sell their, their immigration process is a top-notch process. 
in selecting skilled immigrants. I didn't want to come to Canada as a refugee seeking asylum. No, I came to Canada as a skilled immigrant. It took the, my file four years to be analyzed and give a visa for me. Mm-hmm. It means that they have gone through each and every single paper and document that I have submitted in my application. Yeah. So why the federal government is not doing their job coordinating with the provincial government and the other private sector employees that based on their economic predictions, they needed urban planners and city planners and architects and engineers in these professions. Okay. And when we come here, they throw us in the middle of uh, Pearson Airport and we go out, we don't know where we are going and we find no way. Why? Is it hard to coordinate between your different level of governments to accommodate the immigrants that you need to bring to the country? Or are we such a mean for you to sell and buy and make your economy flourish based on our shoulders? By bringing our money and our savings, buying homes and cars and education and blah, 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 blah here. So I'm a system thinker. Is, is Canada systematically a working country? No, it's a failing country, systematically. And the results, you will not witness it here. You will witness it later. Is Canada facing a housing crisis right now? Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Is Canada facing a gap between immigrants and the government and the society? Yes, it is. Is it going to lead to a bigger problems in the future, like the ones we are witnessing in U.S.? Yes, it will. Do we have a homelessness crisis in Canada? Yes, we do. Are we paying our taxes to the government for arming Israel to kill Palestinians? Yes, we do. Is our government doing that? Yes, it does. So where is the future? I am a long-term guy. Okay? Where is the long-term prosperity in Canada's economy? If you are not allowing the educated people to get into their profession to participate in building a stronger economy. I have a doctor, a friend of mine. She is a specialized from England with the medicine board certificates, blah, 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 blah. She used to make 15 grand American dollars a day. 15 grand American dollars a day. She's been in Canada nine years. Since day one, she's writing exams to practice her medicine profession here. Okay? Till now, she didn't finish. Till now, she is getting uh, assessment programs. Mm-hmm. Okay? Did Canada bring these people to build a prosperous economy? No. Canada, in my opinion, as a Palestinian indigenous guy, Okay, Canada is a colonized, colonized state similar to Israel. What they have the, uh, done to the indigenous people in the history is what's happening to us in Palestine right now. Thank you for taking me. <laughs> it's been uh, very interesting for sure. Thank you very much for giving your time. Uh, it's very long. We've had the longest. Uh, we've crossed two hours. I can go for <laughs> years. I know we're uh, fasting as well in <laughs> Ramadan, so it's uh, difficult to speak. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining and sharing your thoughts. It's been very passionate, and you shared a lot of uh, uh, history, a lot of feelings, a lot of uh, ideas, and uh, you know a lot of the sentiment that's around what's happening in Gaza and with your people. And with us, as well as fellow Muslims around the world are definitely concerned about what's happening in Gaza. Uh, we're all praying, uh, you know, so that uh, you know, the people of Palestine, people of Gaza can be free and they can be prosperous mm-hmm. and they can be healthy and they can be self-determined people. And, uh, you know, we hope to see a solution that uh, I'm not, I mean. we're, not, we're not sure what, we'll, we'll, what it will look like, but, uh, uh, but inshallah, uh, from Allah SWT, there will be some solution uh, and that, you know, we can come back to the 
prosperous days inshallah i mean no jazakallah khairan brother nabil thank you for hosting me and taking me into your uh, studio here it was a great pleasure to be with you a lot of information yeah i need but the last point i would like to highlight for sure yeah please is how and what can be done to help our people in, yes. in palestine yeah before we close so the palestinians are very honor people we don't like fake we don't like hypocrites we don't like people doing get with tamannun yeah so we are not we are not like normal refugees who just wants to take whatever they want and that's it no we have dignity and we have honor in our blood we are hot hot blooded people yeah so in allah tayyib la yaqbalu illa tayyib allah is something precious and he doesn't accept unless precious you want to help don't help me financially i don't want money money for me is nothing we are not looking to this dunya we are not having big dreams like everybody else we don't want to have a three door garage house okay we need a shelter we don't want a ferrari or a lamborghini okay we need a bike a bike is enough for us mm-hmm. yeah we need we don't want to wear a uh, thread marks and some brand names clothing no just give me a piece of a cloth to cover my body and to protect me from the cold this is me palestinian yeah so we are looking to this existing world life as a mean for the next life and our aim is not this life is the hereafter alhamdulillah in palestine our fundamentals of life processing transaction on daily life is the pillar of islam we try to put our religion in every aspect of our life if i have a piece of information i share it with you not because i love you yes i love you that's a different story but i share it with you because of the sake of allah i want allah to accept me mm-hmm. and accept my good deed so <clears throat> palestine is in need of desperate need of assistance and support everybody knows this whatever you can give give not for the palestinian people they don't want you for yourself help yourself before you help palestinians okay because i have an amana from gaza this is for the whole muslim in the whole world the gaza people wallah al azim wallah al azim wallah al azim they told me this to tell it to everybody muslim in the world they say they told me whenever you meet a muslim outside please tell him we are not giving you up we were not forgiving you we will ask allah in front of him in the day of judgment why our muslim brothers and sisters leave us for 70 years 76 years under oppression and occupation why you didn't do your part i have done my part for 76 years my ancestors and my grandparents and my parents have been killed and oppressed and abused okay for the sake of protecting allah's religion islam and al masjid al aqsa ula al qiblatain wa thalith al haramain if i am doing my part you as a muslim why you are standing what are you waiting are you waiting for your turn to come are you still waiting for me to get finished and then your turn is coming is that the time you gonna wake up or is it your responsibility to become in full solidarity with you 
with me, okay? And they protect me and they protect my females and my little kids from these oppressors. I get ashamed when I hear the last month's news about Pakistan and Iran clash in the middle of night and the morning they responded to each other. Do you remember that? I think Afghanistan, Pakistan. No, Pakistan and uh, Iran. Iran, okay. Okay, someone, one of them did something to the other, military-wise, the second morning they responded. MashaAllah, very good. I'm proud of you guys, thank you. I have been under these attacks for 76 years. When I hear Pakistan army is the eighth ranked best army in the world, what is it best for? I am your brother as a Muslim, I am being oppressed. What is your army made for? Saudi Arabia, Gulf countries, Egypt, Jordan, all Arabic and Muslim countries. Okay? I don't see you. The thing is, we are innocent people, Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Palestinians, we are very emotional people. Our mentality is different than yours. Why? <clears throat> Poor my people, my, I consider my people are poor. They are very innocent, very primitive, very simple. They tell me, Brother Rami, aren't we go, all uh, Muslims, brothers and sisters, aren't we all one body? If one part of that body aches, the whole body will ache? Yes, we are. This is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam words. Okay. They asked me, why our brothers and sisters, they don't, they don't victorize us? Why they are not doing anything except sending us canned food or close to expiry food or some assistance from here and there? Why they are not supporting us militarily? Mm -hmm. why, they, why they are not helping us to free our country? Why are they still silent for the oppressor? and their oppression actions. <clears throat> How can we get these people involved in a meaningful manner, in an impactful manner, okay? So this is the way, in my opinion. I thought about this very deeply. If you are an engineer, we need your engineering. If you are a lawyer, we need your lawyer. If you are a teacher, we need your teaching. If you are... A driver, we need you. We need everybody. Do it within your capacity. Okay? <sighs> Palestine is lacking every single thing. We are not a state. And whoever says that we are a country or we have a government or something, he's not understanding anything. And he doesn't know the actual life. We are under occupation. We are under, under oppression on daily basis, on our basis, on second basis. With this war happening in Gaza specifically, there is no schools left. There is no hospitals left. There is no factories left. There is no businesses left. There is no housing houses left. There is nothing left, even streets, roads, infrastructure, underground utility pipelines, they are all destroyed. Do you think, are you still thinking that we need help or not? Is the help or support or assistance or zakah eligible for us or not? Okay, go help yourself in front of your God, of your Allah, okay, and save your life for the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, brothers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining. And thank you guys again for tuning in to the Nabil Show. And uh, hope to catch you guys again next time. This was a fire show. So please subscribe, please like, and please share with everyone around you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.